the Buckeye State seems to host a thriving array of mysterious hauntings. Here is just a sample of the intense paranormal activity found in Ohio. Palace Theatre Canton's Place Theatre is another enchanting venue which first opened in the 1920s and is now on the National Register of Historic Places. According to a report in the Lantern, Ohio State University student newspaper, a magician called Harry Blackstone Jr. conducted a public seance there in the mid-1970s. He was attempting to contact magician Howard Thurston, who had been his magician father's arch-rival. Thurston had been famous in the 1920s and early 30s and had made agreements with his friends and family that they must try to contact him after his demise. His friends had honoured the pact and tried unsuccessfully to contact Thurston since 1936 and for the following 25 years. According to legend via a professional medium, Blackstone instead summoned the spirit of another man who had met his end through foul play in the theatre years ago and who is now thought to still haunt the building. In 1930, the theatre's renowned organist, Banks Kennedy, was fired on and slain in the basement of the Canton Palace. The execution was ordered by mob boss merely because Kennedy was dating his daughter, contrary to his wishes. Another mysterious haunting is an apparition of a little girl regularly seen on the balcony. According to one account, a volunteer had taken his young son to the empty theatre to do some work. After the boy had wandered around, he returned to his dad and said, I thought you said no one else was here. Well, there is no one else here, replied the father. The boy said firmly, yes, there is. I was just up in the balcony playing with a girl. The Dent Schoolhouse Built in 1894, the schoolhouse was the location of an appalling tragedy that occurred in the 1950s. Once called the Dent Public School, local legend states that it was closed down after nearly 20 of its students went missing from 1942 to 1955. According to the oral history, its pupils complained about a foul stench emanating from the school basement, causing some of them to pass out. Finally, in 1955, some Dent citizens are said to have rallied and stormed the school where they discover the putrefying remains of the missing children, sealed in barrels in the janitor's basement. The school's janitor, Charles McFree, had fled and was never caught. The old schoolhouse, which is now a tourist attraction, is said to be haunted by the roaming spirits of the janitor's victims, and rumours claim that the janitor's spirit even returned to continue cleaning the old building and scare off local trespassers. Ohio State Reformatory The reformatory was shut down by a court order in 1990 due to its inhumane treatment of inmates. Filming of the Shawshank Redemption there in 1994 saved it from demolition and it now employs its own ghost hunt manager. Built in 1896, the reformatory saw the passing of many prisoners during its 94 years of operation with their numbered graves lying outside the property. It's widely believed that the angry spirits of those restless souls have remained behind, occupying eight particularly haunted areas inside. Reports by visitors are variously of cult spots, shadow people, slamming doors, and disembodied voices and footsteps. Some areas are totally avoided, while people sense being grabbed in the chapel or pushed by unseen forces. A famous but unnamed psychic investigator was reported as rushing out of the west attic and refusing to go back inside. The Buxton Inn Imagine having your name called out by someone you can't see. That is one of the many reports on visitors to the Buxton Inn. Built in 1812, the hotel reports guests hearing footsteps and coins dropping to the floor where there is no one around. Rooms 7 and 9 are particularly rife with paranormal activity. Most of the busy ghosts are previous owners and include Orrin Granger, who built the hotel, Major Buxton, after whom it was named, and Ethel Bonnie Brunel, the former innkeeper, who was said to have passed in room 9. She is seen dressed in blue, her favourite colour. Others report shadowy figures, heavy doors opening or slamming shut of their own accord, and a friendly departed cat jumping on guests' beds, complete with ghostly meows. Loveland Castle Chateau La Roche, usually known as Loveland Castle, took over 50 years to hand build. The medieval castle replica started out as a passion project in the 1920s by Harry D. Andrews, an eccentric man who bequeathed it to a local boy scout troop. 
There are known to be three entities haunting the castle. One is probably Andrews himself. His apparition has been seen wandering around his former residence, with doors often heard slamming, as he seems to pass from one room to the next. One night, when a maintenance working party held an impromptu live music soiree, a heavy lamp was seen to swing in time to his favourite piece, then stop when they ended. A female entity is thought to be the wife of a nearby moonshiner who still blew up, ending her life. She's described as a transparent whitish apparition wearing a flowing gown, who walks up the road before disappearing into the garden. A third entity is possibly attached to one of the medieval display items. He appears to be a Viking, dressed in a spiked helmet and long black cloak, and bearing a short white sword. He may also be a practical joker, sometimes ringing the doorbell or knocking on the door unseen. Akron Civic Theatre The spirit of another janitor called Fred also inhabits the Akron Civic Theatre. The striking Moorish Castle inspired theatre was built in the 1920s and Fred, a long-time employee, reportedly died during a shift there. He then hung around to watch over things, appearing throughout the theatre and once seen standing by the main entrance. Visitors have been warned to be careful to tidy up after using the bathroom, as Fred has been encountered chasing out or even attacking people who make a mess. The theatre also accommodates other spectral presences. They include the so-called well-dressed man, a possible former patron or actor with impeccable taste who sits in the balcony, and the ghost of a girl who wanders along the canal behind the theatre. She's said to have been a nearby resident who took her own life by jumping into the canal. She usually disappears into the drain tunnel, but can also be heard knocking and calling out in the area. Twin City Opera House the Opera House in McConnellsville, Ohio, first opened its doors in 1892 and is still operating. The building is said to accommodate up to 14 active ghosts within its historic walls. Its many otherworldly inhabitants include a stagehand called Robert Lowry, who had an ill-fated affair with one of the regular performers there early last century. Some paranormal investigators claim to have an EVP recording of a conversation between their daughter Elizabeth, who passed in the opera house from a fever, and her mother, Victoria. The audio suggests that Elizabeth tried to convey forgiveness to her mother, who was not by her side when she passed. Victoria had been recorded apologising and was later heard saying that she was okay. Some witnesses have reported footsteps and cold spots along the catwalk where father and daughter would watch Victoria perform. There are also reports of negative entities in the basement near the underground tunnels who manifest in forms of black shadows and have even been heard growling and ordering people to get out. Other eyewitnesses have seen a man who was slain in the ballroom back in the 1920s. The most famous haunt is of a long-term employer by the name of Everett Miller who worked as an usher at the Opera House for over 30 years. Franklin Castle this Victorian-era home has a dark energy as it can be traced back to the trauma and tragedy of its original occupants. Grocer-turned-banker Hans Tiedemann had Franklin Castle constructed in 1881. The house's increasing size and ornamentation in the form of turrets and gargoyles was said to have been done as a distraction for his wife Louise as the couple experienced one loss after another. Their 15-year-old daughter and three children lost in infancy all passed there, as well as Tiedemann's mother and finally Louise. Used for some time as a German cultural centre, the sorrowful energy contained in Franklin Castle started to flare up in the 60s. There began reports of surging electricity, the disembodied crying of babies, unexplained footsteps and sightings of a mysterious woman in black. Occupants reported doors opening and closing and objects moving around. Some claim to put something down and then go back later to find it gone and then the following day it would appear in a different room on a different floor. A fire in the home saw it abandoned over many years but it is now in private ownership and can only be viewed from the street.